going on to all my Foundation fans out there and welcome back to my channel Movie Files. Elliot back again breaking down the latest episode of Apple TV Plus Foundation. We're talking episode 5 which was titled Upon Awakening. An episode in which we catch up with Gal and see what she's been up to as well as she has a secret person on this ship. Meanwhile we see that Terminus is heavily under attack. We're breaking it all down here in the spoiler review but before we dive into it all make sure you're checking me out on all my other social media accounts. If you all are new to this channel well welcome to the community. Consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell that way you can get the alert from when I drop new content if you enjoyed this spoiler review we'll make sure to like and share the review it helps out the channel a lot but also appreciate the support and once you've seen this fifth episode because we're diving deep into the spoilers let me know your pros your cons your thoughts and theories about the weeks ahead but let's talk about this fourth episode again we spend the first half on Synex and learning more about where she comes from, Gal and her parents and how she ultimately had to leave her parents and how she wants to learn more about the knowledge and learn more about what's outside of Synex. But meanwhile, the ship, the destination she's on, learning what happened to her lover, learning what happened to Harry and that special guest on the ship being Harry. Let's talk about that. But also, meanwhile, all the stuff that's going on on Terminus as we see them ultimately fall due to Farrah's plan, coming to full fruition, taking out an Imperial ship and just literally stuff hitting the fan. Let's talk about it in the comments below. So just getting into my initial thoughts here. I thought this episode was great. I'm so invested in the story. I love that we get these like kind of opening moments where we got a very similar opening to the backstory of the Cleons and how they're reborn and the whole cloning system and, and the same could be said about Gal as we learn about more and again we knew a little bit of this from episode one but just getting more of that context to me builds more of the character so I really enjoyed that narrative that we got to open up the episode and then all the stuff that we got with her on the ship learn about Harry learn about Reese and then ultimately seeing Harry We'll talk about that moment, how is he alive, but then all this stuff on Terminus was just so fascinating. We got some action, which we really haven't gotten that much in the show, which I'm okay with because we've been getting the development, the dialogue, and all this stuff has really kind of, you know, balanced itself out. But seeing the action, which was done well in this episode, was great. And again, Terminus is, is being under attack, has fallen, and what's the Empire going to do with this? So it's a lot of good stuff that I like about this episode. I'm going to break it down, but let me know your thoughts on it. Positive, negative, let's talk about it in the comments. So let's break down this fifth episode. As I mentioned, we open up with Gal as we see her on her planet, Synex, and we get a little bit more context of this backstory, this flashback. This is before, obviously, she met Harry, before the Star Bridge, before everything that shakes down. So I really enjoy that we open with her because again it's been about two episodes that we spent time with this character that I really enjoyed from the first two episodes but this is a different gal this is pre math position gal this is pre knowing knowledge wanting to expand wanting to be a part of Harry and his cycle history this is a different person she's really into her beliefs really into her religion as she has this conversation with this gentleman who wants to expand her mind that wants her to read more to get the knowledge that there's more to life than Sinek so I really love that and also, too, he has a warning, like, we have to give the knowledge to these people because there are floods coming that's going to ultimately wipe out her planet. So, again, a really nice opening there. Really get some context. Get that motivational factor to have her see this person, have this conversation with this person, which ultimately leads to her having this cleansing moment, which I think this was the moment that she realized, I can't live my life like this. As she's given the task to, which was such a terrible way to die, you want your books, you want your knowledge, but well, that's going to be the cause of your death. As they have her tie this man up with those books and his death by books as he drowns in the water, which was some really heavy stuff, if you ask me, as we see her, which again, the cinematography, when she goes into the water and the moon or the whatever, the that planet that she's looking outside at was just such a beautiful shot. But she goes into the water, she lets the man free of his binds. Obviously, he's dead at this point, but she gathers those books. She gathers the knowledge as at the same time, we're seeing that there's other people that have had the same type of death given to them. But again, the most biggest thing in this moment, she gets the books, she's fascinated, which leads her to begin to apply for that mathematician competition with involving Harry Solden, which we see that he personally invites her to team up with him to learn more about the cycle history to obviously be his protege. And this is where we start to see the the breadcrumbs as she has the conversation with her parents and she's at the point of no return, which brings us to the exact moment that we saw in episode one of her leaving her home planet, which is under duress and obviously the planet is going to be going away because of the floods. But again, I love, let me know in the comments now, guys. This is the first 20 minutes of the episode. 
Did you feel it was needed? Were you bored by it? Did it feel repetitive? Or were you like me? And I thought that it added so much more context to the character to show us that she, how tough it was for her to leave her homeland, how tough it was for her to convert and to open up her mind to become part of Harry's, you know, belief and all that. I thought it helps build the character. But let me know how you all felt about that 20 minute opening there. Very similar to, again, the Cleons, the rebirth and the whole cloning system, which added a lot of context for me for the emperors. But let me know what you all thought of it. So we're, we're moving back to speaking of uh, going back to Gal, she's back to what happened at the end of episode four when she's on this pod. She makes her way to her destination. She's freaking out. She doesn't know where she is, but we see the knife that killed Harry Solden is the same knife that opens up the door. And this is where we hear from the intercom comes in that this is all part of Reach kind of protocol uh, initiation that starts to go into play. And this is where she learns that she has been sleep for 34 years. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, there might be a, a, a year that we've seen ahead, because I could have sworn we were 35 years from the Star bit, Bridge being destroyed, but they're saying it's been 34 years, so I might have gotten the numbers mixed up, but neither here nor there. She has been asleep for 34 years, so she has missed a lot, to say the least. So that brings us to, let's catch up with Terminus, as we see there is an Imperial ship that is entering the atmosphere of Terminus, as they are a part of the Empire, obviously, and everyone on Terminus is like, oh, they're here to help us, we're going to be able to take out these people pretty easily, but... Nope, this is all a part of Farrah's plan as we, let's check in a little bit back with Gal, who at this time, she learns about Harry's death. She is told that she was an accomplice, a part of his death, but I'm thinking to myself, okay, what happened to Reesh, her lover? As we find out, he's getting interrogated. He takes full responsibility of the death of his father who adopted him, and we see that he ultimately is executed, right? And this, and, and as I'm watching all this play out, it seems so kind of pre-planned. It seems like this is part of some type of bigger plan with Harry, with his son being involved that we'll talk about a little bit later. But it was hard to see. I, all these characters, these main characters so far, as we thought Harry died and now we see Reesh dies. Or is he dead? <laughs> I guess we'll find out. But it was, you know, emotional for her to see all that part, uh, you know, take into place, which we now see that Gal is also at the point now where she just saw her lover pass away. She's lost 34 years of her life. She wants to take her own life, but somehow, some way, some force of nature, some, you know, kind of almost similar to what happens with the brothers when we saw the younger brother, brother Don, when he was trying to, you know, test his limits of his body, there was a force field around him, and not that there was a force field around Gail, but she flips upside down, and she remembers what that guy tells her in regards to the rebirth and the arrival, but I'm like, how who did that flipping thing was it some type of spirit was it some type of force does this speak to her special abilities very similar to Selar. very interesting stuff is going on there again my book readers are probably very familiar with that but i'm like whoa what, what just happened there but neither here nor there her intellect kicks in as we know she's a very intelligent woman as she's starting to get a little bit of the navigational system with the ship that she's on we cut back to terminus as various plans are going perfectly at this point as she removes her eye which deactivates the uh, defense uh, mechanism or the defenses of the terminus and the attack is underway and this is where we get the most action that we've seen in the show so far as we even get a hand-to-hand -hand combat between Solar and her going against Farrah and it's a pretty even fight until her people come in and kind of stop the fight but again her taking the eyeball out which is a very kind of James Bond blow moment there but again she's just She's about this life. She really wants to show the people of Terminus what she went through in this moment, which again, just kind of shows her kind of where she's at mentally as a person. But speaking of Farrah, she makes her way to seeing Terminus being destroyed and she makes Solar watch this destruction of her people because this is exactly what she saw when she was a kid, her people being taken down. They take out the Imperial ship pretty easily, if, if I may say, but they take that down. And again, this is all a part of her plan as she knocks out Solar, she's going to take her captive so I don't know what that means for I think Hugo if I'm not mistaken I, I saw he got shot I don't know if he's dead but he got wounded her dad's out on the on the war field her mom has been taken hostage Terminus is definitely uh in the you know confines they're definitely in a struggle and it's going to be pretty interesting to see who's going to be their savior is it gals will Solar be able to talk Farrah to letting her people go we'll have to find out but really again Farrah's plan is going according to plan but as we wrap up the episode 
Again, Gal has figured out how to kind of navigate the system at this point. She hears that her destination is to go to Helicon, which is the home planet of our boy, our genius, our mathematician, Harry Solden. Which, speaking of Harry Solden, she sees some blood on the floor, and mysteriously, there's Harry as he is alive, I guess. Which brings me back to episode two. If you all recall, when his son killed him, there was like some device behind his ear, which I don't know if that was just like a, again, this is sci-fi. I don't know if it was able to keep him preserved and, and, and don't kill him. It was able to transfer him to that exact moment. I don't know if we're dealing with time travel. Again, this is sci-fi, so we're playing in that sci-fi realm. But again, I remember him having something behind his ear. And like I said, all this stuff seems part of some greater plan that Solon probably has up his sleeve. So it'll be really interesting to see is that him? Is this some type of cloning situation with the Cleons? Uh, what's going on with the ear? Is Reese still alive some way, somehow? It really brings up a lot of questions there. But more importantly, no Emperors in this episode. But you better believe when the Emperors hear word that one of their Imperial ships were destroyed by a, a, a race of people that they thought that they killed off 35 years ago, they're going to have something to say about that. And I think that is something to look forward to. So ladies and gentlemen, once the people, if Harry is alive... Once the Empire finds out that he's alive, this will definitely shake things up in the galaxy. And I can't wait to see what things play out in the weeks ahead. But I really enjoyed this episode. So many great things that happened. And again, Harry being alive, Terminus is falling. I can't wait to see what the rest of the show has up his sleeve. But let me know your thoughts on the episode. Again, your pros, your cons, your thoughts, your theories. Let's talk about it in the comments. Before you all leave, thank you for staying to this point in the video. Make sure to like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, of course, if you haven't already, and hit that bell. That way you don't miss any of my other future reviews. Hope you all are staying safe. Hope you enjoyed this review. As you can see on the screen now, subscribe to the channel. Check out my other content, and we'll see you in the next video.